Coming up on today's show, a week since inauguration and President Trump is very clearly at war with cleaner, greener transportation, the EPA and the Department of Energy. Tesla CEO Elon Musk says Tesla's autopilot system could be ready to go fully autonomous around the world in just six months' time. And Arnold Schwarzenegger gets an all-electric G-Wagen. These stories and more next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is only possible thanks to the kind donations of viewers like you. Head to www.patreon.com forward slash transport evolved to find out how you can make your own donation today to keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, January 27th, 2017. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. And while it's just been a week since I last saw you here, so much has changed in the past week that it feels like I'm coming back after a few years. And yes, the first piece of news here today is going to be political in nature. But as a news outlet and a channel focusing on cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation, not talking about this first story would be frankly negligent. You see, just one week into the new Trump administration, we've seen a gagging order placed on the US Environmental Protection Agency and the US Department of Energy, prohibiting both from talking about climate change or posting new media on their website pertaining to the same. We've also seen executive orders removing all blocks to the building of both Keystone XL and Dakota pipelines, opening the door to massive environmental damage and desecration of Native American lands. And that's before we even examine calls from top Trump advisers to remove so-called junk science that underpins so much of the current EPA and DOE regulations designed to help keep us and the planet safe. So it's perhaps even stranger than that Tesla CEO Elon Musk, who is quickly becoming one of Trump's top advisers on manufacturing and industry, seems to be going through a little bromance with the unpopular leader. He's even backing the idea that former ExxonMobil CEO Rex Tillerson is a good pick for the next Secretary of State, something that will have some Tesla fans finding very tough to swallow. Still, it's been good news for Tesla, with Tesla stock rocketing skyward this week as a consequence of Musk's involvement with the new administration. But here's hoping Musk's plan is to help promote greener solutions from the inside. Leaving that depressing story aside, it's time for the latest news in now what appears to be a full-on death watch for California automaker Faraday Future. As those who have followed this show will know, Faraday Future has not been paying its bills now for some time, leading to the halting of construction on its massive automotive production facility north of Las Vegas, Nevada, shortly ahead of the Lafish CES debut of the FF91 sedan earlier this month. Well, now it turns out that the company that helped Faraday Future produce some of the lavish visual presentations for that event has not been paid for its work and has now filed a $1.85 million lawsuit for missing payments. Faraday Future has not commented on the case, but on top of everything else we've heard... Oy vey. Now it's time for something a lot happier, namely the news that BMW and Nissan have both been working hard this week to expand the number of electric vehicle charging stations across the US. Working together, the two automakers have announced this week that they've now funded a total of 174 dual standard DC quick charging station installations across the country and plan to fund a further 50 by the end of the year. The most recent charging stations have been installed by charging network EVgo, which received money from both automakers to expand expand its 670 plus strong DC quick charging network across a total of 32 states plus the District of Columbia. Both BMW and Nissan offer customers who buy a new electric car free rapid charging on the EVgo network in major participating cities, essentially making it free or cheaper to drive long distance without worrying about paying huge fees for rapid charging. So well done all round. We've already had one Death Watch story in the news this week, and now it's time for another. Or rather, time for a story about a delay in manufacturing which will probably lead to a Death Watch. Enter Elio Motors, the optimistic startup which wants us to drive around in the Elio E1C, a futuristic three-wheeled, ultra-efficient car that manages 84 miles per US gallon and has a claimed price tag of just under $7,500. The car, ads for which you may or may not have seen on your local cable news network, has been pushed back multiple times in its lifetime, but this week we heard that the latest planned launch date has been pushed back from this year to early next. The reason? 
Well, it appears that Elio is running out of money, down from $6.87 million at the start of last year to just $101,317 at the end of September last year, with widening losses. Personally, I'd love to see it succeed because I like quirky three-wheeled cars that make me think I'm driving the future. But honestly, I just don't see it becoming reality. Sorry, guys. Elio Motors might be running out of cash, but over in California, three of its major utilities are pushing the California Public Utilities Commission to approve a total of $1 billion worth of proposals to try and further increase the electric vehicle revolution. Combined, Southern California Edison, Pacific Gas and Electric, and SDG&E want to dramatically improve electric vehicle infrastructure, and to do that, they need permission from the Utilities Commission to increase their rates to fund that investment. The investment will then in turn pay for electric vehicle incentives, rebates for residential charging stations, and new projects designed to get medium and heavy duty vehicles plugging in just as much as the passenger cars in the state. Why is this important? Well, with electric cars now well and truly established in the Golden State, we're seeing efforts to electrify mass transit and haulage, something which could help California flip the bird to a certain politician in the White House and continue to improve the state's air quality too. Here's hoping that those proposals and rate increases are approved, eh? As any marketing executive will tell you, cementing a product's brand image is essential if you want to be recognized in the marketplace, and branding is something that only should happen after a significant market research takes place. I'm not sure if Tesla Motors has just done that, but we heard this week that it's decided to rebrand its Model 3 electric car for the second time in its existence, ahead of the car's promised late Q4 production debut this year. The Model 3, which was originally known as the Model E before Ford claimed copyright, had used three horizontal lines as its logo ever since Ford had said that Tesla couldn't use the words Model E. Matching the way the letter E is written in Tesla's official logo, the rebranding seemed to make sense. But now Tesla has said it will change from the triple bar mathematical symbol to the number three. It's not clear if another copyright claim caused the change or if there was confusion among customers, but from now on, I can remove that obscure symbol from my keyboard shortcuts when writing about Tesla. Easy peasy. As we noted in last week's show, the global push towards hydrogen as the fuel of the future has undergone a significant loss of momentum of late, with car companies like Honda, Toyota and Hyundai dropping their hydrogen-only philosophies to a more fuel-agnostic approach, with battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles operating side by side. There are plenty of reasons for this, but one of them has been the expense and complexity associated with getting a hydrogen filling station installed. Indeed, even through states like California, where there should be a decent number of hydrogen filling stations by now, delays in planning and construction have meant that hydrogen filling infrastructure deployment is literally years behind schedule. And this week we learned that, if we're lucky, 5,000 hydrogen filling stations will be active worldwide by 2032, up from just under 400 today. But by contrast, there are already some 46,000 electric car charging stations logged on the open charge map around the world, and probably another 10 or 20,000 not even logged. Go figure. At the end of last year, Tesla Motors unveiled its new second-generation autonomous vehicle hardware, proclaiming that any car made with second-generation autopilot hardware would one day be able to be capable of driving itself with full Level 5 autonomy. At the time, Tesla CEO Elon Musk suggested that gradual progression from level 5 autonomy could take a few years. But this week, we learned that Tesla believes it's ready to flip the switch on fully autonomous cars somewhere between three and six months from now, making self-driving cars a reality for tens of thousands of owners in the not-too-distant future. But here's the thing, while Tesla may be ready to flip the switch, it doesn't mean that legislators around the world will be ready for that switch to be flipped. It's great that Tesla has the hardware and software just about ready for prime time, but it doesn't mean that things will magically happen. Legislation takes time, and I suspect it'll be another year or more before we actually see Tesla allowed to put fully autonomous vehicles into operation, certainly with a level 5 operation without a human to watch over it. If you've been watching the show for the past year or so, you'll know that Fiat Chrysler Automotive have been under the spotlight for allegedly cheating the US emissions test system exactly the same way that Dieselgate was taken for Volkswagen. FCA is fiercely denying the wrongdoing, but as you might expect, this week we did hear that Sergio Marchione, CEO of FCA, had moaned at the Detroit Auto Show back at the start of the month that transitioning 80% of its current diesel engines to meet new, stricter diesel emission standards in Europe 
Europe would cost about 500 million euro. That's about $531 million. And that, if you ask me, hints that FCA is willing to do whatever it takes to get its cars through or around those tougher targets. FCA has put a lot of its eggs in the diesel engine basket, claiming that diesels will help it meet new fuel economy standards. But with emissions of diesel vehicles far worse than petrol ones, the company is putting itself in a bit of a bind. If only there was some other alternative that could save the company billions. But Maccione isn't going to go electric. I think he's allergic to electrons or something. Oh well. When it comes to electric motorcycles, there are few that can beat or even match the Energica Ego. A thoroughbred Italian sports bike, it can reach 60 miles per hour in three seconds, go on to a top speed of 150 miles per hour, and recharge from empty to full in 30 minutes when combined with its optional DC quick charge port. It's also styled like a real motorcycle, which is a big thing. And last week, thanks to a collaboration between Apache Custom Motorcycles and Energica, the Italian company produced the Midnight Runner, a cafe racer-inspired reimagining of the sexy two-wheeler. If you're into cafe racers, you'll know the styling is just right. Although, don't get too excited about buying one. With the stock Energica Eva on which it's based costing upwards of $35,000, I don't think we'll be seeing this version hit production, which is sad. And finally, he's known around the world for high action movies, his obsession with fitness, his former governorship of California, and his collection of manly gas guzzling tanks and SUVs. But when it comes down to it, Arnold Schwarzenegger does occasionally have an environmentally friendly side, at least when the cameras are rolling. In the past, he's even owned a hydrogen fuel cell powered Humvee, and this week he took delivery of his very own electric car. What was it? No, not a Tesla Model S or Model X. Those are far too girly. Instead, Mr. Governator's new car is a custom-made, all-electric G-Wagen. Time to say hasta la vista to gasoline, eh? And that's where I'm leaving you for today's show. Thanks for joining me as usual. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our Transport Evolved YouTube channel. Don't forget too that you can also follow us on Twitter at Transport Evolved and read our past and current articles at transportevolved.com. You can also check out our brand new review for the Chevrolet Bolt EV, which we uploaded earlier today, so make sure you watch it. And if you liked what you saw today, please consider keeping us independent and impartial by supporting our Patreon crowdfunding campaign from as little as just $1 per month over at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. And if you can't remember the website address, don't worry. YouTube's new end credit feature means there's a link directly to our Patreon page at the end of this show, as well as links to some of our other videos we think that you'll enjoy. As always, I'll be back next week with another roundup of the latest Transport Evolved news. So all that's left for me to say is I'm Mickey Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a great weekend. And until next time, keep evolving.